Uh, my name is Angela Uls. I'm a visiting professor here at Lund University. I work in the Department of Political Science and at the Lund University Center for Sustainability Studies. Um, so I won a stipend from Riksbanken's Jubiläumsfonds to be a visiting professor here. And my research is on the international politics of climate change and especially on climate change and migration. So I'm the lead organizer of this side event on climate change and migration that will take place at the Paris Climate Summit on December 1st um, at 11.30. Um, so this side event is hosted by Lund University in collaboration with Lancaster and Hamburg University. And we will present the findings of uh, the EU cost action on climate change and migration. So we have actually six partners presenting what is policy relevant about their research at this event. Um, and we also have a special guest, that is Nemo Bassi from Nigeria. Um, his perspective is from the global south, um, so he will reflect on our findings from that perspective. Our main message that we want to get across with the side event is that in actual fact, there is no simple link between climate change and migration. Um, in fact, there's actually a lot of factors that intervene, um, the decision to migrate or not to migrate. Uh, we highlight the political context conditions um, that influence this decision to migrate. Um, for example, poverty is a key factor that determines if people are vulnerable to climate change or not. Um, and uh, so these struct more structural conditions are in many cases a lot more important uh, for if people have to migrate or not. And also um, governmental interventions matter a lot. So if a government can do something to prevent that it, people have to migrate, that of course makes a, a huge difference. So in my contribution to the side event, um, I want to offer a critique of the discourse on climate change and migration. Um, together with my colleague Chris Mietmann, um, I have studied uh, the, all the policy documents over the last 30 years on climate change and migration. And we found three different ways of problematizing this relationship. And in fact, we criticized all three of them for different reasons. Um, so let me briefly introduce what this is about. So uh, firstly, we found that in many documents, climate refugees are actually uh, pictured as a threat that we should fear. Um, so it's said that millions of climate refugees are going to flood the industrialized countries. Um, what this discourse does is really mainly um, make people worried about border controls, uh, get the military on the plan, but it doesn't really help affected people. So we are highly critical of this also very xenophobic discourse. A second discourse that we found um, is argues that we should be helping climate refugees. So we should be creating a refugee status um, that protects people that are displaced by climate, by climate change. Um, however, while this discourse has very good intentions, uh, it often goes over the heads of those who are affected. So I've done many interviews with people from small island states, and none of them want to be climate refugees. Uh, in actual fact, they want to stay exactly where they are, and um, if they demand anything, they want, uh, they want uh, radical emission reductions in the industrialized countries uh, so that their islands don't drown. The third discourse, and this is actually the latest one, um, argues that actually migration has always been one of the ways in which people have adapted to a changing climate. So in fact, it's not a scandal, it's pretty normal and we should not worry about it. And it's also a legitimate strategy when waters are rising that people should pack their things and go. What we criticize about this discourse, however, is that it kind of normalizes the dispossession that people suffer from. So the destruction of livelihoods is somehow naturalized as inevitable. And uh, we find this is quite problematic. So uh, to sum up in our research or the message I would like to get across is that the way we talk about climate change and migration, the dominant discourses are actually quite problematic and they take too little account of what people on the ground actually want and need. And this needs to be a lot more included. Well, what we find most problematic about the discourse on climate change and migration is that it suggests that climate change induced migration is inevitable. This is an actual fact not true. So I find it politically very misleading. 
um, a lot of the projected migration could still be prevented, um, for example, by uh, poverty reduction measures, structural changes in the world, but of course also by emission reductions in those cases where we can really establish some link to the climate. Um, so this is also our message to Paris and why we're doing this in Paris, that we really think if you want, if you're concerned that climate change will destroy some livelihoods, um, you should really invest in much more, much more radical emission reductions. Thank you.